This is a sneak peek into the mind of a slicer, and we will get into that shortly. But first, what are solid layers? In this model, there are anything in green. So we see we have top layers here, bottom layers here, and here in the middle, we have these green layers, which are solid layers, or at least they're generated by the solid layer setting over here in the layers menu. Top and bottom is easy, solid is in the middle. And that setting determines how many layers are going to be generated by a flat area here or a flat area here. Those areas are projected into the model for structural reasons and for aesthetic reasons. Understanding how and when solid layers are generated and mastering the control of it can help you greatly improve your print quality and likelihood of success in some challenging cases. So let's dig into what's actually going on here with the solid layer setting. In order to do this, I'm going to be using the development version 2.9 of Kirimoto, and in the preference menu, I'm going to enable developer and turn the line type to line. When you do that, you're going to get a bunch of new features down here at the bottom that are gonna give you sort of X-ray-like capabilities to look into a part. So I'm gonna start by turning off things like the part boundary, the shells uh, layers, um, the inset. Let's turn off solids, solid fill, and sparse fill. This is going to give us just the bridges and flats. Bridges and flats are overhangs and flat areas that are facing straight up or straight down or are generated as deltas, which are the differences between layers. And from these, you can see where solid layers are generated. Essentially, the magenta is projected downward into the part and the cyan is projected upward into the part. So if we go look at the solid layer setting here, it's three, which means that we should see three layers for every one of these layers. So if I turn this back off and I go into solids, you'll see that in fact, you have three layers for every one of those other colored layers. And then that is how a part is completed. Then the solid layers are filled in with solid fill, except for the top and bottom, which are special. So you turn these off and you'll see these areas here. And that's how solid layers are generated into a part to produce the final model. There's another setting worth considering, uh, and which is also important to producing a good outcome and under expert, that is min solid. And that is the minimum solid area size that is going to be used to generate a um, persistent solid layer. So if we go down and look at the layers here, we'll see that some of these areas are actually quite thin. And when that is translated into the final model, let's go back to a view that we're familiar with. Turn on all the layers that we're expecting to see, and then we can sort of zoom down through this. And you'll see these areas here are solid fill. And this is common in parts, but sometimes that actually adds a lot to print time, but doesn't really contribute much to the print quality. And we can eliminate those by increasing the threshold for a solid area to be generated. And so let's go back in here and say, let's amend and solid of like 10, for example, 10 cubic millimeters. And if we then zoom down to the part, you'll see that most of that solid stuff is eliminated. Now, unfortunately, we also eliminated this one here. So we can do two things. We can either find the right um, area size to turn that back on, or we can experiment, um, or we can use uh, ranges to uh, set a threshold in one area but not, but not another. So we can go in here and say, select this range and say, for this range, I want to set a different threshold for the minimum solid. Um, but in this case, if I set it something like five, maybe what I'll do is I'll get the solid area here and also eliminate it in these areas here, which is gonna greatly improve uh, print time and um, possibly, possibly quality depending on, on your part. Anyway, I hope that this uh, quick tutorial has been helpful for you and uh, look forward to your comment and feedback in the comments below.